and welcome to Making India a New Deal for Defence. I'm Shireen Bhan. Now, ever since the invention of mechanical horses to train cavalry regiments in World War I, combat simulators have played a key role across the world in preparing armies for war. Today, with optimized synchronization of IT and real-time weaponry, these simulators have become irreplaceable to the training needs of the armed forces. But it was only in 2007 that the Indian Army warmed up to the concept of simulation-driven training, by which time Hyderabad-based Zen Technologies Limited had already built a formidable, wholly indigenous inventory of simulators. On today's episode, CNBC TV 18's Jude Sanit traces the journey of the company that's changed the way our forces train their personnel. These guns might look real and their shots ring true. But this is no war zone. It is not an army base camp either. Inside Zen Technologies Hardware Unit at Telanga's Rangaredi district, a 22-year-old legacy is on display. Back in the 90s, just as the world began understanding modern computing, Zen attempted to use some basic technology to change training methods in the armed forces. Two decades and over a hundred customers later, Zen's chairman and managing director Ashok Atluri says that like all revolutionary ideas, this one began with the need to become bigger and better, despite constraints. In 93 when we started, there were the ranges that were built, were built by the Britishers before 47. And they were built about 10 kilometers away from the city. And in, by 90s, they were already part of the city. And to conduct a firing exercise was a big challenge. You had to take administrative permission, alert the villagers around or the you know, people around. And so there was a big process. And there, the skills of the soldiers and the police uh, personnel, they were deteriorating day by day. And this had to be improved. So this was a necessity. Obviously a no-bullets approach to training was the need of the hour. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for a company that manufactured just one product for the first seven years of its existence. Finding customers was the next big challenge and a non-existent market for simulation back in the 90s didn't help matters either. But then turned this adversity into a learning opportunity that has stood it in good stead. 2000 uh, onwards we have developed another 30 plus products now. So it has been the, uh, the consolidation of the initial years, the knowledge that we accumulated uh, has helped us in building newer products much faster. We were near bankruptcy and around that time IDBI Venture Capital Division invested with us and that was a big financial breather for us. The 1.5 crore rupee funding from IDBI Venture Capital not only took care of survival, it paved the way for future production. 2000 saw the company hit a turnover of 1 crore rupees. And today's Zen Technologies is valued at 480 crore rupees and has bragging rights to a range of top rung combat simulators like these T-72 and T-90 tank simulators, this containerized tubular shooting range and this state-of-the-art UAV machine simulator. The role of simulation in the success of the armed forces can be summarized in just one statistic. Before the Indian Army bought Zen Technologies anti-tank guided missile simulator in 2007, a gunner's hit rate was just 5 to 15 percent. That meant for every 40 shots he fired, he hit his target just two to six times. That hit rate went up to 85 percent after the purchase, even as the simulator itself continues to remain an integral part of training. While the three service wings of the armed forces continue to remain its main clients, the last decade has seen Zen build a presence in the export market. Aside from its business with the Malaysian Navy, Zen is currently inking procurement deals in the Middle East and Africa. Back home, the paramilitary forces and the state and central police departments have also been added to the client list. We are trying to get into combat training centers where we are saying, we are going to the countries and saying, listen, we have a range of products. But tell me what exactly is your problem? Do you have an internal uh, terrorist problem or you have an external war threat? So and then we are interacting with them, giving a full-fledged solution to them called a combat training center in which our simulators are part of the whole thing. And we think this solution-based approach is, is, there is a lot of interest being shown by uh, countries in this approach. But a new approach in changing defense needs bring new problems and reignite old challenges. Undoubtedly, the biggest challenge that India's defence procurement policy has had to face is the long procurement period that manufacturers have had to deal with while selling equipment to the armed forces. 
a situation that could take a turn for the worse in the event of a cancellation or retraction. Now this is a challenge that a company like Zen can do without. The hope now rests on the introduction of a single window system of approvals for defence procurement. There have been retractions of the tenders in which we have participated. And uh, one of the easiest way to kill a business is to not delay procurement or uh, placing any order. If you don't get any order, there is so much a business can sustain without business. We have given suggestions where we say, get all the people together. When a decision has to be taken, a file goes for six months at six, uh, seven different locations, get the seven people together, make them take a decision within a week. So it is possible, six, a procurement cycle of six months is possible. In the meanwhile, present-day procurement delays and retractions have forced them to look beyond the armed forces for potential clients. Intellectual property rights are a key component to any new innovation, these combat simulators included. And that's precisely why the Make in India initiative, some feel, ought to be extended into the conceptualization and design of newer technology in India, in addition to merely manufacturing defense equipment. All in the attempt to think, create and commission wholly indigenous Indian defense capabilities. Fortunately for us, what we have done, we have de risked the model by supplying to the police and paramilitary forces. So while the army, if it works, it is very good for us. Even if it doesn't work, we still, uh, you know, uh, walk along. But there is one area the company just cannot afford to walk away from. Everything in this is the IP. When the guy with the IP walks out, you are left with metal. So I would, I would, I think that it is very, very essential that we invest, we invest in indigenous innovation a lot. It's very, very essential that. While we may uh, look at the make in India, but our, we, our, the government should actively encourage a design, developed and made in India category. They should exclusively say that if it is available in this category, I will not go into make in India category. So that's a much higher and aspired, aspirational category. So we, we would reserve the, for all the products in this category. If it is available, we want to procure it from this source. Essentially, innovation. It's innovation that has, is and will be at the forefront of Zen's production operations, a vertical that's been entrusted to company president Kishore Dutt. The brain behind most of Zen's innovations, including its advanced weapon simulators, Dutt says the best of simulation is yet to come. Simulators, he believes, could turn geospecific, evolving in tune with the changing topography of a location. One particular product is a helicopter squadron. Suppose they would like to go for a particular mission. So I have this simulator. They will actually go on that mission on a simulator before they actually embark onto the real helicopter. So I need to keep the difference between these two at the minimum. Now, when you say that, the terrains dynamically change. The terrain which was there last year might not be the same over here. So how do I... So we are working... We have a geospecific terrains, but we are working on a method where I can capture through satellites and other things and dynamically and procedurally create those terrains and keep it over there. But the success of simulation as a training requirement, Ashok feels, can happen only with the cooperation from the Ministry of External Affairs. <coughs> Getting embassies to partner with defense manufacturers and selling exports is something Zen hopes will happen in the long run. Of course, we have to develop products that are world class. But having developed this, the embassies at various countries should push our product, become aware of them. There should be a mechanism for becoming aware of them and then saying, that, listen, India has world class products, why don't you buy it? Simulation has changed the way the armed forces train. But a series of policy changes like lower procurement periods, incentives to develop IPR in India and the need to get embassies involved in sales are vital strategies of the industries to jump to the next level. Now, the inflection point for simulation acquisition is happening. And we expect the simulation acquisition to really go up uh, in multiple notches. It's a great time now. For now, Zen Technologies will also to announce its procurement deal with the Middle East, even as it will also focus on developing its new combat training centers. Adopting its much fancied solution-based approach to business, the company is locked and loaded to carve out a niche for itself in India's $40 billion defense budget. Well, that was the story of Hyderabad-based Zen Technologies. It is time for us to take a break, but when we return, we travel to Bengaluru to bring you the story of Tonbo Imaging, a company that specializes in advanced electro-optics and imaging systems for military and commercial applications. Stay on with us. You're watching Make in India, a new deal for defense.